Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and in my last video, I told you I was working on a boar goat sculpture, and I've decided that I'm going to start over. I have, I have, I think, good reasons for it. The biggest one was that I, I found myself procrastinating. I was doing almost anything else except working on my goat, and I realized that I just wasn't having as much fun with it as I should have when I'm sculpting, because that's what I do for fun, right? So the reason that I was having a hard time, well actually there's two. The first one is that it's really hard for me to see the shapes of this shiny aluminum foil. I really like using aluminum foil on smaller sculptures like the squirrel and the, uh, the unicorn and the little tiny dogs. When, you're having, uh, when you're working with really small shapes, you have so much control over the aluminum foil. It really works well. But with something big like this, if you wanted to change your mind just because, uh, like in one case, I uh, chopped off her her head and moved it just because I wanted a slightly different posture, uh, that involved a power saw. <laughs> that wasn't very much fun. Um, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't that big a deal. I put her back together and she looked just fine, but um, just the fact that I had to do it was kind of irritating. Um, I kind of like moving clay around um, just to, to get the shapes and, and change my mind and move the clay in a different direction. I, I, I wasn't able to do that with the aluminum foil because this becomes a really solid mass once you've got it all glued together with the hot glue. Um, that came to be a really big problem when I found out that one of the eyes was in the wrong place. So I had to get out my, um, my heat gun. <laughs> and that's a little bit scary because you can burn down the house with one of those things. So I decided to start over and since um, I was starting over, I decided to eliminate that problem of making this lady balance. I, I was really hoping that I'd be able to use the same idea that I used for the giraffe of weighting the bottom of this neck. And uh, once I got really into it, that became obvious that that just wasn't going to work. I wouldn't be able to get this heavy enough for that to. She was just going to end up on her nose. That meant making a base for it. And that would add that much more weight and it would make it just that much harder to ship it if anybody bought the thing. So I'm going to go ahead and make a, a wall sculpture, which I should have done in the first place because I really like wall sculptures. So I'm going to put this away. It, it, it didn't turn out bad. I know you can't actually see it because you can't see the shininess either, but, but it was all right. But I'm going to do it over. And as long as I was going to do it over anyway, I decided to take care of another problem that I was having. And that is that when you're looking at photographs of uh, goats, those photographs are usually taken by people who are interested in the goat's face and their the front of their muscle and the smile and the eyes. They don't usually take photographs of the back of a goat's head. They never take a, a photograph of right from the top of the head because... Well, why would you? <laughs> so getting the actual shapes of the bones and the real shape of the full head was really hard to do. I, I knew I was guessing. And so I, since I'm going to start over anyway, I decided to go ahead and find some really good photographs of a goat skull. Right at this moment, there just happens to be one out on Etsy.com. Go ahead and, and look for it. It's a boar goat skull. And because they're trying to sell that skull, they took photographs of it from every side. It was just perfect. So I've, now I've got all my photographs of the skull. And I had a, a pattern that I built for the specific goat that I want to make a portrait of. I used the aluminum foil to uh, make a, a really basic skull shape on top of my pattern. And I found out that I still couldn't see the shape, so I wasn't, um, it was really hard for me to get them symmetrical. I kept moving them around and everything, and um, I, I just discovered I just couldn't see it because of that shininess of the aluminum foil. Um, I think that has something to do with the way my eyes work. I'm getting a little bit older. So I covered the skull with plaster cloth just just so that I can get a white surface and I can see what I'm doing and when I covered it I was able to use the plaster cloth to even out some of those shapes that weren't um, quite in the right place. So let me go back to the original rather crude drawing that I did before I made my first goat and I'll show you uh, what I discovered that I had gotten wrong when I did that drawing. 
this is the drawing I showed you in the previous video. It was um, my way of explaining to myself the shapes that I was seeing on Nubian goats, which have much stronger um, bones showing on the actual face of a living creature. But I was wrong. What actually happens is that we've got a much narrower, actually, the, the bones themselves are much narrower, but there is a section here. Let's just forget the center line for a moment because we'll pretend we don't have cardboard on the inside of this lady. And then we've got two sections, one on each side. So this is the boniness that comes in one piece. You've got the horns coming out this way and you have the eye here. Now this is the dough from the side, and you can see this is um, the bump that the ear is attached to, and this is that bony protrusion that comes right here. So it comes down, and that's where you get that line right here. And so now that I know where all these pieces are, I should be able to make a much nicer sculpture and be much more confident when I'm sculpting. Now when I'm looking at these two together, I can see that this one really wasn't all that bad. It was really, really close. But I just wasn't having fun with it. That's just that's just what is true. I, I wasn't enjoying myself when I was making this. I was coming up with um, too many excuses to do something else. <laughs> and now I'm actually getting excited about it again. Especially since I get to have an excuse to get out my clay. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put her on this mass form. I'm going to go ahead and get out my clay and start working on it. I get to put away the aluminum foil because I'm all done with that. <laughs> Now how am I going to actually finish this after I get the clay on there? I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I think I might actually make a silicone mold. I haven't really decided though. I'm, I'm kind of doing this a little bit at a time. Not really the reasonable way to do a sculpture. <laughs> but that's, it's a learning experience for me and so that's what I'm doing. And in, an, in the next day or two, uh, you'll be able to see the, the clay sculpt. And you can tell for yourself whether or not this was a reasonable idea or not. So stay tuned and come back and visit me, ultimatepapermache.com.